Wednesday, everyone. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day so far. My name is Andrew Heishman. I'm the lead forecaster here at NWW116. So in today's video, we'll be taking a look here at the tropics real quick. We'll actually be taking a look at some mesoscale analysis, basically just current conditions. We'll be taking a look at the storm prediction centers. We do have the threat for severe weather through the next two days. We'll be taking a look at some forecast models. We are expecting a relative, you know, pretty big cool down for, you know, across a bunch of the country. We'll be taking a look at the satellite view, and then we'll be taking a look at the National Weather Service hazards, so your warnings, watches, advisories, and so on. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. So, we do have one disturbance here, basically across the northeast, you know, near the mid-Atlantic region. Overall formation of the system is not really expected. Overall formation through five days is a low 30%. Formation chance through 48 hours is a low 30%. This has lost about 20%, uh, you know, support over the last day or so, because yesterday it was actually a medium 50%. Now it's down to a low 30%. So overall formation pretty much has a 70% chance of not forming if you look at it that way. In terms of the Eastern Pacific, we're not really dealing with much here. Uh, generally, uh, you know, nothing really expected through the next five days. In terms of Central Pacific, nothing's really expected either through the next five days. So basically we're just keeping an eye on here the Atlantic. This is the same low pressure system that pretty much caused a lot of heavy winds across the mid-Atlantic region. Uh, locally here yesterday, we had wind gusts over 50 miles per hour Several trees reported down across northern Virginia, District of Columbia, and Maryland. I'm going to go ahead and take a look here at the mesoscale analysis. We have two areas of low pressure, that one that we just talked about here, basically across the eastern coast of the United States. We have another area of low pressure here that has actually been uh, basically been here for you know quite a day or so now. This thing generally moved off of the eastern side of uh, basically Colorado, driving all kinds of severe weather across Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. This area of low pressure is generally expected to move to the east, bringing the severe weather along with it, in which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, generally, right now, we do have a tornado threat basically for Louisiana, which we'll get more to and we'll get more into right now. So, taking a look at the Storm Prediction Center, we do have an enhanced risk issued for today. Overall, tornado threat is a 10% uh, significant. Basically, means every single 25 miles, we have a 10% chance of seeing a tornado EF2 or higher. Basically, we have the 5% zone, too, also showing that uh, basically, every single 25 miles, we have a 5% you know, chance of seeing tornadoes here. Basically, stretching from central panhandle of Florida all the way through, basically, uh, you know, central and eastern Louisiana. We also do have a 2% chance, basically, stretching down from, basically, southwestern Arkansas all the way through, basically, western Florida. In terms of wind, we do have a 30% chance for, you know, basically, damaging winds being over severe criteria, basically, 60 miles per hour or more, basically, here in the red shade area, basically, across, you know, basically, southeastern uh, Louisiana, it looks like a little bit of the coast of Mississippi. Overall, a 30% chance of damaging winds being 60 miles per hour or more. We have a 15% zone basically stretching around from the same area as the 5% tornado risk, basically from central panhandle of Florida all the way through basically eastern Louisiana. We do have a 5% risk basically stretching from you know central and southern Arkansas all the way down to the west coast of Florida. In terms of hail, we're not really expecting anything for today. That's basically what we're dealing with there. Day two outlook, we do have a slight risk in effect, basically severe threat level two out of five. We do have a tornado threat for tomorrow, 5% region, basically stretching here from the northern parts of Florida all the way up to the southern Carolina, basically the southern area of North Carolina. Basically what this means is that every single 25 miles, you have a 5% chance of seeing a tornado here in the brown. Every single 25 miles, you do have a 2% chance of seeing a tornado basically here stretching from southern Florida all the way up through northern North Carolina and as far west as the central area of the panhandle of Florida. We do have a small sliver here, including uh, basically southeastern uh, Alabama and southern Georgia as well. In terms of wind, we do have a 15% chance for damaging winds being over 60 miles per hour or more. Uh, potentially every single 25 miles, we do have a 15% chance of seeing damaging winds along there. In terms of this, we do have a 5% zone, basically showing that there's a 5% chance of seeing damaging winds here in the 5% region stretching as far basically, you know, around the central area of the panhandle of Florida, all the way up through basically northern, uh, basically North Carolina. It's stretching all the way down through southern Florida. We move on to the forecast models. We are expecting, you know, quite a cool down, which we'll get into right now. We do have those two areas of low pressure, one located right here across the southern Great Plains, and we have another one here across the northeast. Both of these systems are generally moving eastward, and this one's actually expected to bring a lot of rain across the eastern side of the United States. We'll keep monitoring that over the next few days. Uh, but generally, this is also driving its severe weather across the southeast, which will break down here in a moment. Uh, further on down the line, we actually do see this cooler temperature start to creep down into the country. You know, some potentially even showing freezing temperatures getting as low as Mississippi and Alabama. Now, this is, of course, one model. This is one run, so you can't take this 100% seriously. However, 
Temperatures are expected to be drive down for much bits of the country. So stay tuned for that. We'll continue to monitor that over the next bit. So in terms of severe weather, we do typically have uh, we have that you know severe weather in effect for bits of the southeast. Well, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the southeast here. We'll take a look at the NAM model. For thunderstorms, you need basically dew points. You need dew points in the 60s to 70s. You need uh, instability. You need shear, which we're going to take a look at some soundings as well. So we're going to start off by taking a look at the dew points. We do, looks like we do have dew points here, basically in the mid uh, mid 70s here, which is relatively nice. This impact or this thing is generally going to impact the uh, southeast here, moving eastward. As you can see here in Florida, whenever the severe weather is supposed to be in play. We're talking around dews in the basically lower 70s, which is definitely supportive. So the moisture side of things is definitely there as the system progresses basically eastward. In terms of the instability side of things, we'll go ahead and take a look here at the uh, basically the mixed layer cape, basically showing the mixed amount of fuel that the storms can have. In, ter in terms of the NAM model, basically showing 18Z NAM, we're looking as high as you know 3,000 joules per kilogram in some areas, which is more than enough instability required for some thunderstorms, you know, especially producing tornadoes and all. We generally do expect, you know, the uh, instability to be around, you know, 2,000 joules per kilogram, you know, in some locations here in Florida for tomorrow's severe weather. However, this is just one model. Let's go and take a look here and see what NAMNEST has to say with the instability in store for this. So basically, we're taking a look here as well. We're looking around, you know, mostly around 2,000 joules per kilogram and up, uh, maybe locally higher in different amounts. So that's basically what we're dealing with in terms of instability for tomorrow. In terms of instability for today, we are actually looking at, you know, instability still around 3,000 joules per kilogram, which is more than enough needed uh, basically to produce any type of severe weather. We're going to go ahead and take a look at supercell composite. We'll take a sounding here for basically uh, south central uh, Louisiana here. We'll go ahead and see exactly what this is saying. We'll take another sounding here for the uh, basically the panhandle of Florida, basically the central panhandle of Florida. And then we'll take another sounding here for basically central Florida near Orlando. So let's go and take a look at that. For basically southern Louisiana, we do have dew points in the mid-70s, which is definitely supportive. You know, kind of a slight hooking hodograph here indicating that tornadoes could be possible. Decape around 442, so, you know, maybe some gusty winds with these, but generally uh, nothing too crazy is expected. We might see some, you know, damaging winds along with that. But generally, you know, that's basically what we're dealing with. In terms of hail, we are not expecting any hail in terms of this. So we move on to the Florida Panhandle. This is actually contaminated, so we're going to throw that one away. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look. Actually, these are both contaminated. So let's go and go back to NAM here real quick. We'll go ahead and take a sounding here for near Orlando. Uh, and then we'll take another sounding here for the panhandle of Florida to kind of get an idea of what we can expect. So in terms of that, we're actually still contaminated for that area. Let's go ahead and go back here. Uh, so this is basically for the uh, basically the panhandle of Florida. We'll go ahead and grab another sounding real quick. Uh, that way it's not really contaminated. But yeah, that's basically what we're dealing with there. Not contaminated sounding. We do have a slight, you know, Bearing which your pattern here, dew points in the lower 70s we're talking about, not really any hail threat in terms of that high precipitable water along with your high, uh, you know, wet bulb zero. We'll definitely kind of rule out any type of hail that's forming. Decape around 500, you could have some, you know, updrafts, or sorry, downdrafts, producing some damaging winds, you know, across the region. Uh, but generally, shear is looking good, you know, moisture is looking good, instability around 1,000 joules per kilogram, which is definitely enough to get the job done. So in terms of moisture, shear, and instability, that is all a go. So we're going to go ahead and take another sounding here for basically, uh, basically we'll take, we'll take one for northeastern Florida here to kind of get an idea of what we can expect in terms of severe weather here. Not a contaminating sounding with a very slight varying winter pattern, however, you know, a little bit weaker shear. Maybe a weak tornado or two can be possible throughout this region as we did see that 5% region or that 5% tornado threat in effect. We do have a 72% dew point down here, basically low 70s, which is definitely good enough to support severe weather. Decape is around a low, basically around 300 joules per kilogram, in which, you know, damaging winds can be possible, but, you know, they're probably not going to be expected. In terms of instability, we're kind of looking a little bit, you know, risky here. We're looking at around a 615 mixed layer cape, you know, which is honestly kind of low. Uh, it still does not rule out any thunderstorms potentially producing some weak tornadoes. But that's basically what we're dealing with in terms of the forecast models with the cool down that we were expected and everything else. Let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite here. We have a rather impressive area of low pressure system that we've been actually looking at here. Uh, with the This is the same system here. But generally, this thing is pretty impressive, mostly cloudy across the northeast here. We move into the mid-Atlantic region, mostly clear across Virginia uh, and Maryland. Take a look down to the southeast. We might have some patchy clouds here, here and there, but overall, mostly sunny. We move into the Ohio Valley, mostly overcast, stretching from basically West Virginia all the way up into Michigan. And then we take a look at basically the Illinois and, you know, Indiana and Kentucky area, mostly clear for the most part. 
And then we have that area of low pressure here basically stretching down from the southern Great Plains all the way up to basically the northern Great Plains in which you can see this full of cloud cover. We generally move to the southwest. We're generally clear from basically central Texas and onward. And then we move to the basically northwest where we have some patchy clouds, you know, but mostly sunny in some of these areas. That's basically what we're dealing with in terms of the satellite view. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the current National Weather Service hazards. So we do have a red flag warning in effect for basically southern Florida and basically, you know, the southwestern uh, panhandle of Florida. We do have high wind warnings in effect for basically the panhandle of Florida, uh, southwestern uh, Kansas, and basically central uh, Montana. We do have a wind advisor in effect for basically a lot of here in these, uh, you know, a lot of shade here in basically Texas, pretty much all of Oklahoma, central Kansas. We do have some from pretty much all of Alabama and some of the panhandle of Florida. We do have one county here in Mississippi. We do have some kind of stretching up here between, you know, the basically the Tennessee and North Carolina border. And then we do have some more basically here in uh, basically southern Idaho and basically western Montana. We do have a few more up here across the northeast as we do have that very strong area of low pressure. In terms of winter, we do have freeze warnings in effect for basically the western parts of Texas. You can see here basically freezing temperatures are expected probably tonight. We do have some flood watches in effect for basically bits of the northwest in terms of this with the coastal flood watch in effect for basically the tidal Potomac area. We do have some coastal flood warnings out somewhere around, you know, somewhere around this outlook area. And then we have some, you know, flood warnings, a lot of flood warnings across basically Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, uh, basically Ohio. We have Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and we do have one here down in Louisiana as well. Basically flooding conditions are expected. In terms of tornadoes, we do have a tornado warning in effect. However, I'm not really sure exactly how old this is at the time. But by the time you're probably seeing this, this tornado warning will be already gone. We do have a tornado watch in effect for basically bits of, you know, the southeastern part of Louisiana into the southern Mississippi region. And then on top of that, we do have some severe thunderstorm warnings basically across southern and central Louisiana. So that's going to do it for today's video. I hope everyone has a wonderful day today. If you guys have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments below as I'll get to them. And I'll make sure to, you know, get to your answers and everything like that. But anyways, guys, my name is Andrew Heishman. I'm the lead forecaster here at WW116. And I will see you guys in the next video.